Good morning. Well, I have finished the blue heron deterrent, although not completely, pretty much. Uh, there's been so many iterations of this project that I am still not happy with the end result. However, uh, it's going to have to do for a while. And here it is. And if you can see, it... Uh, does extend past here. I'm going to need to build some sort of guard so you can't walk there. I have tried a few things. I originally uh, put a slip ring on the top of that, which allows you to transmit power through a rotating um, structure, and put two lights on the end of that. However, I just didn't like the end result. It was very bulky, even to hide uh, the two little tiny wires that I used to uh, uh, power the uh, LEDs on the end, addressable LEDs. I just didn't like the look. So if you'll notice, there is actually uh, some Daglo tape on the end of those, and I did buy a black light. However, that failed miserably. It did not work, and I don't believe that it was because of uh, the tape. I believe it was because of the uh, LED black light. I think it just was junk. It, it emitted purple visible light, and that's not the object that's supposed to uh, emit ultraviolet light. Anyhow, if we go over to... Uh, uh, here, you can see I have a couple of boxes here, and this box controls the speed of that. You can see I can slow it down or turn it off, for that matter. I can make it go in the other direction. However, I used a threaded coupling, so I really want it to go counterclockwise because that keeps it uh, tight all the time. Although I did use Loctite on every connection, uh, and unfortunately I have had to remove it a few times, and that is a pain when you use Loctite, especially Loctite red, don't use that. If you ever want to take things apart, use Loctite blue. Um, in here is a pul pulse width modulator a controller that controls the motor under there. The motor itself is actually a motor that uh, is designed for a, an electric bike. Uh, it operates off of 24 volts. Um, <clears throat> uh, down here, underneath this uh, little contraption here, is the power supply that runs that. And you can see I uh, just down and dirty the uh, put the wires in, in there and they run in the pond. It's all low voltage. <clears throat> the, there are four LED matrixes on the outside. I believe they have, uh, I want to say, 256 lights in each. I may be wrong. Uh, but there's four surrounding that. And there are two strips of uh, that are uh, one meter long that have 144 lights each or 288 individually addressable LEDs. I uh, 3D printed this box and uh, I just have the wires coming out here. It does connect to um, my network here and I use an open source program. Uh, what is in this box is an ESP32 microcontroller. And I used an open source program called WLED. And WLED allows you to individually address any of these uh, LEDs and control segments and colors. And there's literally hundreds of effects that you can use. And based on that, you can change the intensity, the speed, the brightness, uh, I segregated this into two different uh, segments. Uh, the first segment are the 288 lights underneath of this uh, object that I'm going to call helmet. It is actually a uh, 
uh, bushel basket from Harbor Freight, galvanized. I painted it black. Uh, and uh, I used that to cover the motor and, uh, the, and give the uh, fish a little bit of shade. Um, uh, if you notice that I did uh, wire the, uh, L, uh, the uh, lily pads to the bottom of that frame, and eventually that's going to cover that whole area there. The fish are hungry this morning. I did, uh, they were already fed this morning once, but uh, they like to eat. Uh, these two brown poles here, uh, well, I'm going to take this, I'm going to stain it a brown color and then I mount that on there like a temporary and uh, not a temporary a play bridge or pretend bridge I will put a little marker on there that says do not enter or whatever um, but so far that's the work in progress uh, these lights uh, I can have them come on at a certain time at night. I currently have them on all the time. They are very low at, uh, in brightness because at nighttime they're very bright uh, if I have them on high intensity. And uh, you cannot see that now, uh, but I will put a link in the description to the open source project. Uh, it's very easy to uh, uh, program the microcontroller that's in this box. I do have a microphone here, but if I took the cover off this box, you would see that it is not currently connected. There is a, uh, what you call a uh, audio fork on the uh, open source uh, WLED project that allows you to use matrices and uh, also sound for it to dance to the music. I've made a number of projects like that. As a matter of fact, uh, I made a few and gave them away as Christmas gifts. Um, but uh, I gave them some waterproof lights and a box very similar to this without the ears on it so I can mount it. And it listens to the music. They can control it from their cell phone or tablet or their network at home. And uh, anyhow, it's fun at least for me, uh, I have not seen the blue herring since I installed this device. I have uh, had a camera that looked up on that roof thinking that maybe he was there and whatever. My neighbor that lives in that house did say that he saw him in this tree uh, after this was installed and stayed there for approximately 10 minutes and then flew off. I have videotaped this backyard using my little uh, WISE cameras 24-7, uh, and uh, I have not seen him since this has been completely installed and uh, operating. Um, as you can see, it covers an awful lot of the pond. Uh, he used to be able to go over to there and get down, but he cannot do that now. Uh, he can get here, but this is pretty deep at this part of the pond, and he cannot wade in there. He would just have to steer him, but then he might not be able to get out because he'd have to exit that way. So I'm hoping that this will work. I uh, I'm getting to enjoy my fish again. Unfortunately, they used to be 100% koi. Now they're 90% goldfish. And that's because all of my good koi were killed by the blue heron. And over the years, I would add goldfish or, you know, and the few nice koi that I have, he must like the koi. They must be tender. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Anyhow, uh, this mechanism here is an old uh, three-tier uh, umbrella. I don't know what you call those. They, they basically have three parts. It's a long oval uh, umbrella. And I have a new one, so I decided to use that as the basis 
for mounting this motor. Originally, I was going to take those two pipes and weld an arm off of there and weld an arm off the other side and have two uh, things that rotated and then realized that I was overcomplicating this. I also had a geared mechanism where it drove another gear. I calculated the ratio to make sure I could get the right speed I wanted because I was looking for a little bit slower but a lot more torque and I could do that with gears. But then uh, after I welded the contraption all together and tested it running, it ran for one half hour before it actually broke a weld, which I was shocked at. So therefore, uh, I gave up the ghost and decided to drive it directly. And this is inspired by, I think, space balls. That kind of looks like helmet uh, right there. Um, the... Uh, Eventually, I would like to take uh, this controller here and use, since it basically uses pulse, pulse width modulation to control the speed of that motor, the little ESP32 controller that is in this box can actually accomplish that same thing. And it wouldn't be very difficult to write a program to control that and change the speed and then use only one controller for everything or one ESP32 and at the same time I could write it to um, be able to do it via the network or the web well network not web I do not have any of these devices uh, connected um, they are connected to a segregated network but they do not have internet access um, but uh, if I used the microcontroller in here to control that, uh, the little microcontroller that was in that box, or that is in that box, actually can host a web page. And based on that, I could design a little web page that had different speeds, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. This motor is capable of 300 RPM. So I could put a percentage and just have a little web page that you could adjust from there. However, in reality, it's so much simpler to just turn that knob and change the speed that I'd be foolish to do that, but I love to learn things and I like to do things the most difficult way possible sometimes if it involves learning something. So, I don't know, we may make an iteration of this that is controlled via the network and uh, the web page on an ESP32 controller, but currently it is going to operate in this fashion. Anyhow, uh, I will include some pictures of the internals of these boxes and um, see if anybody might be interested in the uh, WLED open source uh, addressable LED program. Uh, or, uh, you know, maybe building one of these contraptions for uh, your uh, pond. I don't know. Uh, I have tried so many different things. I have watched things about, uh, at one point I was going to put an electrified fence around here. Just uh, some wires using a, uh, uh, a high voltage fence from, uh, you know, uh, like... Uh, tractor supply that you would use around a cattle farm or whatever to electrify the fence and uh, I watched online and it apparently does not affect blue herns very much because their uh, feathers insulate them from the wires and their legs have such scaly uh, I don't know skin that it does not transmit the power. He actually stood on the positive and negative lines with high voltage going through and did not care and just killed this guy's fish anyhow. So that was out. I don't want to hurt him, but the last, uh, I had a previous iteration of this last year, used a much smaller motor. It was going a little bit slower than this. But once he found that he stood on that little box there, the, the filter box, and it 
hit him in the leg. Well, it startled him, but then he realized, huh, that didn't hurt. So he actually walked into it and stalled the motor and broke the gears and then had a field day or a smorgasbord in my pond. And from that point on, I built a conduit structure that was approximately three feet high. I drove posts in the ground or conduit in the ground. I bent the conduit to conform to the shape of the pond and then I netted the whole thing. And I thought it was the most ugly thing in the world and I could not stand it. Not that this is beautiful by any means. However, if I can see the fish like this and I can feed them and interact with them without having to worry will they be there tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening, uh, I'll keep this ugly thing here. Although the netting was really a problem because even when I weed whacked around this edge here, uh, well, guess what? Uh, it would invariably hit the net somehow, get all wrapped up, and anybody that weed whacks knows that when you weed whack and get your string tied all in the knots with the, uh, the netting and the netting all wrapped around the head, it is not fun. So, um, I did weed whack the other day, and I got to... Uh, enjoy not having to um, enjoy not having to worry about snagging the net uh, anyhow uh, I think I have some pictures of it at nighttime and I will try to include them I know it's not pretty and yes I realize there that that matrix is coming loose from the other matrix they're just glued to the top of there and but because they have a tapered uh, top, it can't be uh, smooth all the way around. Uh, they are waterproof. I be IPV67, I believe, and uh, all the major electronics are located in these boxes here and uh, and here. The Electronics, of course, for the lights are in this box, and the light electronics for the motor are in here. This also has a switch. If I turn that switch off, you can see it slows down and stops. And the this is counterclockwise, and the two lines are clockwise. And I always run it on counterclockwise. I try not to... Um, I try not to start it with it in full motion because I don't want to put a lot of torque on that. However, <clears throat> it has run for 10 days straight through two torrential downpours, gale force winds two days in a row, and it has played like a trooper. That doesn't mean that it is going to last, but I am hoping that uh, that has proven its work. Anyhow, I hope all is well. You have a fantastic day. Bye. Good evening. This is what the Blue Heron deterrent looks like at nighttime. The four matrix panels that circuit us uh, uh, go in a circular... Yes, that's easy for me to say. Good evening. This is what the Blue Heron deterrent currently looks like. The four matrix panels that go around the bushel basket called helmet, and you can't see the whirling thing right now, but uh, this is what it looks like at nighttime, and it is controlled by um, an ESP32 microcontroller running a program called WLED. And WLED basically looks like this. It is a well-written program that you can basically do anything you want. It currently is running a preset, but I can change the preset and I can go to a solid color and then I can go back to colors 
and choose any color I want in here. If you notice that anywhere, I wish I maybe I can do both. I don't know. Probably drop the phone. But you, you notice that the lights that are reflected are the lights that are underneath of there. And they are running a different effect rather than the solid effect. So you can control both segments individually. And I'm going to go back to a preset and it's called a sweater and that's kind of a private joke. Um, but that's the colors of the sweater, not quite, uh, that I was given as a gift when I was uh, 16, maybe 17, by my girlfriend, now my wife. And I thought it was ugly. And my mother and I thought it was ugly. And her mother and her thought it was beautiful. Anyhow, this is what it looks like at nighttime. You can control everything with it. I hope you can see the beautiful colors, and uh, anyhow, I hope it keeps the hern away. You have a great night. Bye.